Remember when I said I hated batch painting, it was the worst thing ever and it was the biggest pain in my life and I'd never, ever, ever do it again? Well, I lied. It's time to paint up some Bretonian arches. Welcome back to Envelope 2 Miniatures, my name is Dietz and yes, we will be bitching and batch painting Bretonians today. With Games Workshop teasing the old world over the last couple of years now, I've noticed that Bretonians have really got their spot in the limelight, they're really starting to shine. A lot of people are repainting up their old Bretonians and getting their armies ready for the launch of the old world. So when I got my hands on this sealed box of Bretonian arches, I thought it'd be pretty fun to paint some up. I haven't painted Bretonians before, but I'm really looking forward to it. I want to see if Bretonians really tickle my fancy. I thought it'd be pretty fun to paint some of these guys up and make them super vibrant and fun and pop. All right, let's get straight into it. And this box had the plastic wrap, which is always a bonus. I feel like I get to relive my childhood that I missed out on when I get my hands on a box like this. At first glance, the sprues are looking pretty schmicko, and I had plenty of fun snipping each archer off their sprue and then trimming off the square bases. But as always with these old kits, there are a few mold lines which I'll have to take care of. Lately I've been really enjoying the preparation of models. It's kind of becoming a bit therapeutic to me. I love just zoning out, taking it easy and not really thinking and just putting sand on the bases, gluing them all down and getting them all prepped. It's kind of a bit like meditation I guess in a way. Alright so let's get started on the layers and boy oh boy was I dreading this part because I knew it was going to be a real slog. I use bronze flesh tone as the base colour for my yellow and apply that to half the jacket. I said it once and I'll say it again, but bronze flesh tone is one of the best colours. I absolutely love it. I then use techless blue on the other half of the jacket for my blue base. I'd be super careful with the blue and try to give it a super straight line on the back of the jacket as there are no recesses there to kind of divide the two colours. So the base coats for the jacket are now done and it's time to get onto the leggings. And I used dark green for this. I had to do about three coats of this because this paint is super patchy. And I did this across all eight of these fancy boys. And for the skin, as always, I use Cadian Flesh Tone and apply that all over the faces and the hands. After looking at these faces, I'm starting to stress a little bit because I've noticed that a lot of the details are warped, but I'll worry about that a bit later. A lot of these old kids do have that problem, and you probably noticed on some of the high elves I painted a few months ago that they had the same issue. For the bow and arrows, I use Scrag Brown as the base. I want to keep these bows super simple, and I'm not going to destroy my soul and spend large amounts of time giving them detailed timber textures, because if I did that, I would be here forever. Time for the leathers, and you've probably seen me do this about a hundred times by now if you've watched my previous videos, but I just use dried bark as the base, and I go over the frilly little neck thing, the boots, the belt, and the fanny packs. I then use corn red as a base colour for the leathers of the dagger, and a bit of bone white for the arrow feathers. And last up, I slap on some gun metal for my true metallic metal base, and I put this on the helmets, arrowheads, belts, daggers, and the arm protectors on all the models. I've had a few people reach out recently, ask me about my process and why I do things in a certain way. And basically it comes down to simplicity. I used to do things a bit more messy and go back and forth and paint things differently, but I found that when I'm doing batch paints, the best way to do it is just to slap on those base coats, then put on the washes and then build up the highlights. Now it's time for some washes and I water down some ultramarine blue and apply this all over the techless blue leaving a good amount in the recesses. Watering down this ultramarine blue is a must because it can be pretty full on and pretty intense if you don't. After that, I apply Seraphim Sepia to the yellows and I'm not too worried about going over the gunmetal, the brown and the leathers with this because it's pretty translucent. I give the yellows a really thorough coat of this, again making sure that plenty sits in the recesses. Time for everyone's favourite null oil and I apply that all over the gunmetal, the dryad bark and the green leggings. This just darkens up those places nicely. I only started doing this recently, but I find it works pretty well. Next, I slapped on some watered down gullman flesh all over the skin, letting it pull nicely in the recesses. This is the part where I started to stress a little bit more about the face molds because they were a bit wonky. I used some thinned down Agrax Earthshade all over the bow and arrows, and then some skeleton horde just over the arrow feathers. Okay, so the washes are done and now it's time for a breather. Okay, the breather's over, let's get back into it. Like always, I wanted to get the larger hard parts out of the way first, so I decided to tackle the blue highlight straight up. I go back over the folds of the jacket with techless blue, and because some of the jacket surfaces were pretty flat, I made some of my own folds as well. I used a larger brush for this, as I want these to be quite large. 
I go all over and then I mix in a small amount of blue horror to the techless blue and go over a smaller area. It's really important to take your time with this and not race ahead. It's so easy to accidentally go over too much of the last blue shade. I then mix in some more blue horror and go over again to a little bit less of an area. And then I do a final highlight of blue horror with a really skinny brush. I find this final really bright highlight gives it that old hammer look. Next up are the yellow highlights and I do a very similar process to the blue. I mix in one part Uriel yellow to one part bronze flesh tone and highlight those folds nicely. After this, I go for a pure Uriel yellow highlight covering less of an area. Once I was happy with that, I mix in 50% Dawn Yellow to the Uriel Yellow and go over it again. I was a little worried about this at first because I didn't want it to clash with the blue and look odd when they were next to each other, but I feel like this worked out nicely. Last up, I used a bit of Dawn Yellow for that final edge highlight just to finish up. Okay, so the jacket is now done and it's time to tackle the dreaded green, a colour I really struggle with. I go back over the Null Oil Green with a thin coat of dark green. Then I mix in some Warboss Green and highlight the knees and calves, anywhere I think there should be light. I mix in a little Moot Green to this mix and start highlighting again. To give the legs some shape, I hit it with a sharp bit of pure Moot Green over the knees and calves. Now this is not the best greens I've done, but it's a batch paint and I'm in pain, so it'll do for now. Now it's time to smash out the leathers and I apply some Doomble Brown all over the folds, making these lines pretty thick. Next, I use some Scrag Brown covering less of an area. And last up, I mix in a small amount of Bone White to the Scrag Brown and do an edge highlight just to the tips of the frilly neck thing and the edges of the boots, belt and the fanny packs. I give the dagger some Wozdakar Red to the edges and then use some Evil Suns as a final edge highlight just to make that dagger pop a little bit. For the skin tones, I go back over with some more Cadian flesh to the raised areas of the face like the nose, the brows and the cheekbones. And then I mix in a little bit of Flayed One flesh to the Cadian flesh just for another highlight on those raised areas. I also use this colour on the back of the hands to make the knuckles look a little more lifelike. And to finish off using a really skinny brush, I use some Pure Flayed One flesh just do that final highlight on the tip of the nose, the cheeks, the lips, and anywhere it really needs it. So after the skin tones were done, it was time to do the eyes. And unfortunately, as I said before, the eye grooves and sockets and the molds were just an absolute mess. So I tried to film it, but I kept getting my head in the way of the camera and I really needed to bring the model like up to my face. It was so extremely hard to get the eyes right and it took me a few attempts. So I skipped that. But anyway, I just did my usual process of dried bark, a bit of white, and then a dried bark dot right in the middle. But I managed to get a few good eyes, so I was pretty happy. Time for some bow and arrow action and I just went back over the Agrax covered Scrag Brown with more Scrag Brown and then I made a little bit of a mix of Scrag Brown and Bone White and applied that to the end of the bow and just the ends of the arrows using a glazing method. I then grabbed some Bone White and just went over the feathers of the arrows being careful not to get it in the recesses. Super simple and it did the job nicely. Now we are well and truly on the home straight and it's time for the true metallic metal. Make sure you do this last so you don't have to change your water and you can be lazy just like me. Like always, I go back over with gun metal, being super careful not to get it in the recesses. I always make sure I water down my true metallic metals and use them more as a glaze. And a good little rule to have is wherever my paintbrush leaves is where I want the most paint. Once I was happy with that, I then used pure silver going over the top facing areas and using it as a glaze for the top of all eight helmets. I then slapped some more on the buttons, the belt and the dagger. Well, that's it my dudes, all done. And I did find this batch paint a little bit easier than the last two batch paints I did. Maybe I'm learning, who knows? So make sure you go check out those other videos. And before I get into the grand reveal, make sure you hit a like and please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, here they are, here are my Bretonian arches. Thanks so much for sticking around guys, I really appreciate it. If you want to see me paint something special, let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Cheers.